is obviously science is a wonderful thing but science is very good at explaining what but not very good at explaining why and a very simple thing you could even explain to a child is welcome to the bible in one year podcast brought to you by two brits and a bible today is day 352 covering hebrews 1 2 3 4 5 and 6. so Adam wasn't doing an accent, he's just very ill. So good on you, mate, for being here and doing these recordings. But yeah, yeah. I finished off my hot totty, which is a hot toddy, but Canadians can't pronounce T, so I assume it's a totty, which is lemon, honey, and most importantly, whiskey with hot water. So hopefully that'll keep me going. <laughs> anyway, here we go. The Book of Hebrews. Um, so I was proper impressed by Hebrews, actually, because I've always I like it's been such a popular book, but I've never really known much about it. So having read into it, um, I just wanted to take some of the apologetics Bible firstly, because it says several books in the New Testament stress Christ's death. But the book of Hebrews is especially known for its emphasis on the doctrine of Christ as both high priest and sacrificial offering to atone for sin. No other book in the New Testament so masterfully combines teaching from both the Old and New Testaments, which I kind of liked that sort of way it tied it all together, really, because I think yeah. there's so much importance to it. Um, yeah. And interestingly enough, the author is genuinely anonymous. Still to this day, people do not know who wrote the book of Hebrews. What's known about it is that it's written to a very known audience, um, likely Jewish Christians, as it gives an assumption that the reader knows so much of the Jewish sort of the first five books of the Bible, the Torah. Um, and it's kind of written any time between AD 40. So it was like second gen Christians. They'd not seen Jesus personally. And AD 96, because the book of Hebrews is referenced in a book called One Clement, which is a book dated at that time. But it was far more likely that it was dated before AD 70, which is when the fall of Jerusalem came, because the book references sacrifices that were still being made. So likely sort of mid to late AD 60s. But so much is unknown about it. But it's such a flipping good book. Yeah, that's a great intro, Adam. Thank you for that, mate. And yeah, very, very interesting. Just one small thing. I think you said AD 40 and AD 96. When I, your notes say AD 60 and AD 96, but either way, it's somewhere in there for sure. It is 60, so yeah, cheers. Oh, all good, all good. Um, but yeah, that really helps. And yeah, it's a great book. Like having read the Old Testament a couple of times now with you and stuff, just like there are these little references that do start to pop in your head. And you can imagine someone who's grown up with... Torah and Jewish wisdom, as you said, would see so much more than we even would. So, yeah. But anyway, I feel a bit guilty about this. I hope you win because it's a bit weird taking on a, an ill man on his deathbed. But rock off. Three, Three two, two one. one. Yeah. Scissors. You know what's really funny is I actually predicted that you would do scissors and I was like, I'm going to do paper and I think he's going to do scissors. So that's weird. It was like charity now. No, it's not charity. You still want it, but I'm just saying. Um, anyway, so two verse one is where I started. And it's so interesting because I read it. I read it wrong. And I was like, that's a really good point. And then I was like, I've read that wrong. But the point that I made wrong in my own head was so good that I kind of had to say it. Because the verse itself says, we must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard so that we do not drift away. But what I read was we must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to do what we have heard so that we don't drift away. And it was that small point of like, we must do what we've heard. It's all well and good hearing it. But unless we actually step out, it's the what's the fruit in our actions kind of thing. So it was like, it was a kind of an Adam edit to the Bible in there, which I know you shouldn't really do. I literally put the word do in there in green as I make my notes in. But yeah, that was my, my point on it. Yeah, I love that, dude. That's awesome. Um, mine was was a bit more simplistic really it was just the idea of just remaining in faith remaining in the bible remaining in prayer and obviously that is what we're trying to get people to do in a very small way with this podcast right so if you if you remain in the bible i help, i think that helps you remain in the faith and also remain in prayer teach you how to do those things better that's really cool okay my next point uh hebrews 2 verse 11 both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family so Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. So that's just really humbling, I think. Jesus is not ashamed to call me um, a brother, and he's not ashamed to say I'm part of his family. Um, so I absolutely love that. He nailed all of the sin that I had and that you had and that any other Christian had to that cross with him. 
clothed us in his righteousness. And even though we deserve that shame, Jesus actually takes pride in us because of his grace. And I just think that is a beautiful thing to remember over and over again, especially when you're having a, a bit of a bad day. Yeah, no, that's a that's a smashing point, dude. It's very important to just keep you grounded, basically, in that knowledge, really, isn't it? So that's really exactly. cool. Um, so for me, 2.14, um, I like it because this is where it says, since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared their humanity so that his death might break the power of him who holds the power over death, that is the devil, and free those whose lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. So it's just one of those proofs in the Bible that the devil currently hold or did hold the power over death until Jesus died beat death rose again and took the keys of death is the the sort of visual representation of that um and obviously now we still live in the world but that's why we shouldn't be of the world because of that yeah that's good dude and that's so important for people to understand like if you're fairly new to christianity that's something that you need to wrap your head around so um uh just a quick one from three verse four from me um every house is built by someone but god is the builder of everything so like some people still like lean towards, you know, Big Bang Theory, evolution, all that stuff. I'm not saying that I don't believe in science by any means. Obviously, science is a wonderful thing, but science is very good at explaining what, but not very good at explaining why. And a very simple thing you could even explain to a child is creation suggests a creator, right? If mm -hmm. a painter, if a painting like suddenly like I got one on my wall there, I don't think all oh, that somehow you know emerged from atoms on its own over lots of time right it would be insulting to someone's intelligence to say that so in the same way you know every house is built by someone but god is the builder of everything like god's creation is proof of his existence yeah i saw that was a great meme i saw i shared on facebook a few years back um and it was two snowmen standing side by side and one snowman is like what do you mean there's a creator? Obviously, we've evolved like this from snowflakes. And it's just that that image of like, obviously, a snowman doesn't just form itself, but people assume the world just formed itself. So, yeah, yeah. it's really cool. Exactly. We've got uh, pressed the time already. I know we've both got a lot to say. Um, so my next one's 4.15. Yours is 4.12. So. Uh, yeah, it's just such a, it's one of those really important parts of the Bible. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any a double edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. And I had a note on here previously, I don't have a date on it, just saying it's not all fluffy and easy. Because right. like, there's so much real to the Bible. And actually, there's, I've been reading through these last few books. It's like we can't be taking this stuff for granted. We have to be so sure of our faith and our salvation and living and actively working that out. Yeah, that's good, mate. That's absolutely true. Uh, 4.15, just a couple of verses later. Um, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses. We have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. So whilst we do have to stay strong in the faith and whilst we do have to be as obedient as we can, we do have a, a high priest, Jesus, a God, a Messiah, who was also tempted by sin. So he does understand that there is this temptation knocking at our door, sin is crouching at our door. Um, and I think that was an important thing for me to remember as well, because there are certain thoughts that are, can be sinful, right? Like if you lust after a woman or a man, if you're if you are a woman or whatever, and then the anger and so on, right? And it, it's sort of committing murder in your head. But actually, Jesus had some of those sins. So there is a cutoff point where if you don't act on those momentary things, I don't know if that's sin, right? So we don't have time to unpack that more, but that was just a thought I had on that one. Very valid point. Very valid point, mate. Yeah. I think once we've done the Bible in one year as we're going through, we're going to have time to go through some of these points in more detail. It's going to be really good. So stay tuned to that. Uh, my yeah. last one was just the uh, five verse two. He's able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and going astray since he himself was subject to weakness. Kind of what you said there. But I love it's that um, dealing with people gently because it's that gentle restoring back to the faith though interestingly enough in 6 4 it does say it's impossible for those who once have been enlightened who have tasted it and then wandered away to then be brought back to repentance which is kind of a tricky one we don't have time above our pay grade and all that but yeah it yourself read a bit of hebrews it's such a good book it is a fantastic book um yeah so that's all we've got time for today people thanks for tuning in uh tomorrow is going to be hebrews 7 8 9 and 10 so why don't you beautiful people pick up your bibles get reading share this with someone we love you see you tomorrow